Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Dr. Adi Adibanjo from Ambassade Live, uh, from Ambassade International, welcoming you to another episode of Ambassade Live. This beautiful Friday morning, uh, the 2nd of December, 2022. Wow, December is here. We made it to the final month of the year. Praise the Lord. Uh, that is something to be thankful for. That, that is something to really praise God for and to thank God that the journey of 2022 is gradually drawing to a close. December, the, 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 the final month of the year. And our prayer and our expectation for you is that God will crown this year with goodness for you and that the abundance and the blessings of God will abound in your life even this year. It is not too late for you to receive what God has earmarked for you for 2022. I know we hear that a lot, but uh, it's true that there are things that are on God's agenda for you for this year. And I don't want you to lose heart or lose hope, but to continue to expect for God to show up even in this final month of the year. Because as a righteous, the Bible declares that your expectation will not be cut off. So let your expectation be ramped up like, like, like runners finish the race, you know, strong. Uh, our prayer and our, our belief is that you will finish this year strong in the name of Jesus. We want you to finish stronger. Don't grow weary. Rather dig your heels in and just keep moving and keep praising and keep thanking and keep rejoicing because this year will finish on a high note for you. So uh, thank you for joining us on Ambassador Live today. Ambassador Live air airs every Friday morning, 8 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, that's 7.30 p.m. in India currently. Uh, it's 2 p.m. in the UK, 3 p.m. in Nigeria. Wherever you are across the world, uh, figure out your time zone reference to Central Time, 8 a.m. That's where we are. And um, we thank you for joining us. We believe that you will make Ambassador Live a part of your weekly schedule as you come and hear the word of God and, and receive teaching that will build you up, that will encourage you, that will help you to become all that God has ordained for you to be. My wife, Basola, is joining us now. And uh, together we are Ambassador International. We uh, step out in faith, obeying God almost 25 years ago. Uh, to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in the nations of the earth. And we've been doing that now uh, for all that time. So grateful to God for his faithfulness, for the privilege of being uh, good news announcers, of being ambassadors for our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the root of the name of our ministry, Ambassadi International. We are ambassadors, Adi Busola and Adi Benga, Ambassadi International. Uh, and so... We have been uh, announcing uh, the name of Christ, uh, the reconciliation that he brought. We've been announcing that all over the world uh, for several years. And now through this medium of Ambassador Live, we continue to do that, to teach God's word, to draw people close to God, to remind people of the God that they serve, of who they are, and to, so that they're poised and positioned to win in life to be victorious, and to show forth the glory of God. So uh, thanks for joining us. I invite you to share this feed. Uh, share this feed wherever you're watching, whether it's on um, uh, on Instagram Live or it's on Facebook Live. Uh, share this feed with others. Let them know that uh, there's a session on, a teaching session, where they can receive encouragement, a diff uh, be built up, and be, be be made strong in the Lord. And so share this with your friends. Share it on WhatsApp. Well, however you share things, please just share this. And um, also we uh, we just you know want to thank you for being uh, faithful, support us, praying for us, and and just you know help helping us along on this journey of faith as we continue to serve the Lord and His purposes. Uh, praise God. So thanks for joining us today. Hey. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here today and it's great to see you. Thank you for 
your faithfulness in tuning in every day. You don't have to do it, but because you love the Lord and you want to know him more, you tune in to learn more of him. And I pray that the Lord will honor your faithfulness and your commitment to seek him. And as you seek him, you will find him and you'll be blessed in all of your ways. It's always a joy to be here and, um, you know, stand before you to minister to you. I just have a short word of encouragement for you. And that's in Daniel in chapter 11 and in verse 32. It says, and the B section of that scripture, which says, it says, but the people who are faithful, the people who do know their God will be strong and will do exploits. Amen. The people that do know their God will be strong and will do exploits. I just want to encourage you that to remind you of who you are, that you are a child of God. You're a child of the most high God. You're a king, you're a priest unto our God. And the same grace, the same anointing, the same power, the same spirit that is in Christ is at work in you to do exploits. So whatever challenges, whatever situations that you may be facing, or whatever life may bring at you, you need to remind yourself of who you are. Don't look at you just as you. Look as who you carry on the inside of you, who you represent, and you represent the Most High God. You are not by yourself. You are not alone. You are not without a God in this world. You are with God, and God is with you, and He's working in you both to do and to will of His good pleasure. And that brings me. Um, to remind us of the story of Daniel and the three other men that were thrown into the furnace of fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. The law had been set up to say they had to obey the king. They had to bow down and worship the king, defiling God. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made a choice, made a commitment and said, no, we're not going to bow down. We know what we believe. We know who who we are and we know whose we are we're going to stand up for everything that we believe and who god is and what god says and because they did not bow down they were thrown into the furnace their lives were at risk and they said well our god is able to save us and if he doesn't save us so be it and the bible says that the furnace was so hot that the men that took them and tried to cast them into the fire was caught and killed by the um the 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 potency of, of of the fire that the people that tried to throw them into the fire they died but they were preserved because god was with them and it was said of nebuchadnezzar in amazement he just jumped up and looked and said what do i see i thought we threw three men into the fire i see four men loose unbound walking free and walking as the son of god so in whatever situation you're going through you may seem like you're alone, but God is with you. He's the fourth man in the fire that is going to step into every situation and every challenge that tries to come at you. So on your job, as the year is coming to an end, in your family, as challenges are coming and decisions need to be made, remember that you represent Jesus. Remember who you stand for. Don't compromise your stand. Don't bow down to things that you know will not honor God. It may not look pretty, it may not look well, but in the long run, God will come through for you. Just the same way he came through for Mordecai. Haman that tried to throw him into the pit was the one that was thrown into that pit. And so as you're working with God, God will help you to excel. When you're strong in the Lord, you will do exploits for him and you will attain great success. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's an encouraging word. And um, we just thank God for these truths and these realities that we have come to believe and embrace. And uh, we continue to communicate and to put you in remembrance of. Like the Apostle Peter said, as long as he remained alive, he, he, he was going to continue to put people in remembrance of the things that Jesus had said and they had believed. So we continue to do the same. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we have a great word for you, but it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, isn't it? Uh, can you believe Christmas is just 23 
uh, days away. That's just three short weeks and two days. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to it. And we know you are too. And as you begin to look ahead and look forward to Christmas, it's it's a like the like the song says, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's a beautiful time. It's a beautiful season. There's a lot going on, families. But remember that in the midst of it all, uh, Jesus continues to be the reason for this season. It is his birth that we celebrate, uh, the coming of uh, Emmanuel, the coming of the great I am, putting on the veil of flesh. And so uh, continue to be mindful of that and keep yourself in that place in him. Don't, go ahead. Don't let yourself be drawn out of him because of the pressures. Listen, uh, as wonderful as this time of the year is, it's also a time of great pressure if you allow it. There's a temptation to stress out, to be under pressure, or oh, the year is coming to an end. Maybe there are things I wanted to see I haven't seen. There's a lot that, you know, you know how sometimes towards the end of something, it looks like, you know, especially for people that are like, you know, uh, like to leave the things till, the, till later to the end. It seems like a lot of pressure and a lot to do and a lot is happening. In the midst of that all, remind yourself the reason for the season is Jesus. And keep yourself in that place in Him, in a place of peace, in a place of love, in a place of joy. Don't let the stresses get the best of you. And I encourage you, that's the best way to enjoy Christmas. Not stressed out, worried, trying to fix everything and make everything happen before the end of the year. But trusting and relying on the one who Christmas is all about. Yeah, and I mean, it's interesting how the world is trying to change things and turn things upside down. I was at a place yesterday. And they add a sign up instead of saying wishing you a merry christmas he said wishing you a grinch a grinch mass they are trying to take christ out of um the whole picture and i was a little child that was arguing with another one and said i'm so upset why is Grinch trying to take christmas from jesus jesus is the reason for christmas but i was not disposed to being able to necessarily say anything about it you had two kids that were talking they were like no don't talk great grinch grinch it's all about grinch it's all about grinch and the little child said my mom told me that you know christmas is all about jesus and so as parents we have a responsibility to teach and tell our children truths because when they go out there they're going to be told several things that do not match up and do not line up with the word of God. But whatever you tell your children as a parent has a strong influence on them, much more than the things that are said outside. Amen. So let's be mindful of that. Uh, little things they may seem, mm -hmm. but that's what seeds are. Seeds usually are very small things. And so we sometimes belittle little things. Oh, it's not a big deal. That's a very... That's a buzzword they say. It's not a big deal. It's not that big a deal. Uh, it's not, it's just a little thing. Well, the little foxes spoil the vine. Little tiny mustard sized seeds of uh, seeds can become great huge trees that become foundations in the future. So let's be mindful of the little things. Let's take heed to ourselves. Let's not be swept <clears throat> along with what the world does and what the world believes. Let's be rooted and grounded in our knowledge of who our God is. And that also continues to be part of why we're teaching this series. Amen. All right. So uh, thanks for joining us. We'll be praying for you, hoping that Christmas, trusting that Christmas will be a wonderful time indeed for you. And for you who are out there, who are maybe struggling at this time, challenged in some way or the other. You know, there are quite, actually quite a number of people and I get to, you know, hear about these things, maybe more than some others do. People that are struggling, people that are, uh, uh, you know, are struggling emotionally, are struggling uh, uh, mentally, are struggling with their identity. And um, they just, you know, some of them on the verge of maybe even giving up. That's why we pray. That's why we teach these truths. So that those who are in a place of weakness, in a place of frailty, they can hear truth that puts some strength in them 
that put some courage in them, that lets them know they are not alone. You are not alone. Jehovah is right there with you. Amen. And so, uh, you know, I just want to encourage you, uh, stay tuned, uh, continue to hear God's word, continue to be encouraged, be blessed by what you hear. And uh, I'm sure that this end of this year is going to be a great, great month for you, December, Amen. in Jesus' name. Let's pray and get into the word this morning. Father, we're so grateful. Thank Lord, you. what a privilege we have to uh, come into your people's palms, into their phones, into their devices uh, with the living word of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Father, for uh, gaining access into their hearts, into their, into their lives, to speak words of truth, of peace, of life into their lives father thank you for your for your presence this morning we just receive your presence holy spirit have your way today yes, as we teach the word of god let the life of that word let it flow through the airwaves let it come out through people's devices and let it penetrate deep into their hearts to right every wrong to to fix everything broken Yes, to heal every hurt, yes, to, to, to revive everything that is, that is seeming to be dying and yes. to restore hope to your people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for utterance granted by the Holy Spirit. Help me to speak simply and clearly the truths of God's word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. So once again, thanks for joining us. Ambassador Live every Friday morning, 8 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. in India currently, um, 2 p.m. in the UK, 3 p.m. in West Africa, in, in Nigeria. Wherever you are in the world, figure out the time. Make it a part of your weekly schedule. Join us. All those that are joining us on Instagram, I see you, Asharia. I see you, Asha. Blessings to you. Uh, you know, it's good to see you all again. Uh, God bless you. I miss you all. Those are some of my family in India, precious students of mine. And um, I just continue to pray for you all, trusting God that God is moving in your lives, watching over you, blessing you, and taking you to the heights that he has prepared for you in Jesus' name. All right, so um, thanks for joining us. I have a word for you today. I've been teaching a series called Rediscovering God. You off? All right. So I was going to leave right now. She'll join us at the end of the broadcast uh, as we wrap things up uh, um, and finish with prayer. All right. So we'll be teaching a series called Rediscovering God, uh, where we've, uh, the, it's purposely titled that because uh, for many, it's a discovery, but for many also, it's a rediscovery. And uh, the, 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 the reason for this, the goal of this is because there was a time when uh, you know, I met certain people and I was speaking with and counseling with uh, some people uh, who were kind of going through a challenge. And I began to talk to them and uh, I discovered that they had a very um, limited knowledge of God. Now they were Christians, they go to church but they had a very limited knowledge of who God is. They knew a whole lot of things around the Christian faith, around the Christian, uh, Christian faith, but they didn't know God. They didn't know God. It's just like going to a, a palace and seeing everything in the palace and seeing the servants and seeing the, the splendor and seeing the, the dancers and seeing the ceremonies and seeing the, you know, the, 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 the assistants and seeing the, you know, associates and seeing the prime minister and seeing the beauty and, and maybe even beginning to eat the food that's been prepared and the spread that's there enjoying the party. But you don't even really see the king. <laughs> you don't really know the king. And so in that picture, yeah, you see all the splendor. You see the spread that the king has provided. He's provided food in abundance. He's provided entertainment. There's fun. There's excitement. There's, there's uh, an amusement park for the kids. There's Ferris wheel, you know, for them to ride. There's entertainment for them with clowns and people that are making them happy and laugh. There's, you know, there's uh, entertainment for the, for, for the adults. 
people are fellows that are, are interacting, the 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 socializing, the talking and laughing and having fun. But where is the king? <laughs> That's the reason we're here. And so that is the purpose of this, so that we don't just get taken up by the fun, the excitement, the celebration, the ceremonies, the pomp and the pageantry associated with the Christian faith without a knowledge of the king who has made all that possible. We just know oh, there's a king, yeah. No, I don't just want to know there's a king. I want to see the king. I want to know the king personally. I want to draw close to the king. I want to sit at the foot of his throne. I want to hear him speak to me. Hallelujah. And so that's been this, because that's where your strength comes from. My wife uh, read a scripture earlier on in Daniel chapter 11 and uh, the second part of verse 32. It says, and the people that do know their God will be strong and will do exploits, will be strong. And that's the, that's, the, that's the purpose behind this. We want you to stay strong. The enemy wants you weak because it is the weak that become easy prey for the enemy. The weak become easy prey for the devourer. But when you're strong, you're able to resist. How many of us have watched National Geographic you know, uh, videos of where a lion is trying to attack a wildebeest. And that lion is trying his utmost, is trying and trying and trying, but if when it gets a strong wildebeest, that wildebeest raises its horns and, and resists, resists being killed. Hallelujah. Amen? That's the picture of, you know, the enemy as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. But the Bible says, but resist him, steadfast in the faith. For you to resist, it takes strength. That strength does not come from financial strength. It doesn't come from social, political strength. It doesn't come even from intellectual strength. That strength comes from the Lord comes from knowing your God, knowing in whom you have believed. Because when the chips fall, when everything comes crashing down, can I say something to you? It is who you believe that is going to keep you strong. You better be sure that the one in whom you believe, in whom you've placed your hope, in whom you've put your life, is strong enough. Glory to God. Amen? So that... In knowing him, you become strong to resist the enemy. So we've gone on a journey of this rediscovery, looking at the different manifestations of God. We said God is not hiding himself from his people. He's actually eager to reveal himself to us. That is why he sent Jesus, the ultimate manifestation of God in the flesh. God came down and dwelt amongst us to reveal to us what he was really like. That is who Jesus is. His name is Emmanuel. God with us. Why did he come to be with us? So that we could come to really know who God is and what God, was, what, what God is like. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. That is why we celebrate Christmas. The coming of God to the earth. The Word being made flesh and dwelling amongst us and we beheld his glory we saw him in his fullness we saw what he was really like he was veiled in the past we were not sure what he was like was he the one destroying or killing or was listen jesus came as a manifestation to reveal to us what god is really like and the bible says jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. It's the devil that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I am come that you may have life. He is a God of life. He's come to give us life and to reveal to us who God really is. So in this journey of rediscovery, we've looked at different names of God from uh, the Old Testament 
as he revealed himself to his people and also in the New Testament as he reveals himself to us through Jesus. And so that's been kind of the journey and then understanding who God is in us. Because you can know who he was to Moses and to David. but And you can even know who he was in Jesus. But who is he to you? Who is he in you? That is the knowledge that brings strength to you. That is the one that sinks deep into your heart and strengthens you from within. Strong in your inner man. Glory to God. So that regardless of what's happening on the outside, regardless of, what's it, regardless of what it looks like on the outside, Bible says even though the outward man may be perishing, but the inward man is renewed day by day, strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Nothing able to separate you from the love of God. Hallelujah. You may be cast down, you will not be destroyed. You may be pressed, but you will not be crushed. You may be persecuted, but you will never be abandoned. Hallelujah. Because you know in whom you have believed. That's why they could throw the Hebrew children in the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Hebrew men rather. Rulers they were. Threw them in the fire, but the fire couldn't burn them. Because they knew who they were and whose they were. Believe me, when you know who you are and whose you are, in your moment of trial, he will show up. Glory to God. Because you expect him to show up. But if your expectation is that you're going to go down, things are not going to work out, it is difficult for God to show up in those situations. He still can because he loves you. But as we will see today, the manifestation of I am, of God, it requires a measure of faith on our part. If we are not seeing God, if we are not seeing his manifestation, sometimes it's not because it, it, it sometimes it's because maybe that faith element is missing. Maybe we're not mixing our faith with that. Because once again, God would not impose himself he will not force himself. He comes to those who believe. Glory to God. Those who believe. Hallelujah. So uh, the last time we were together on Ambassade Live, uh, that was a couple of weeks ago. We took a short hiatus last week for the first time. We didn't really have Ambassade Live last Friday. But, you know, last time we were talking about Jehovah, the name of God, Jehovah. We said the, the, the manifestations of God and getting to know God. You can do that through the names of God. The names of God are, 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 are names that convey the nature, the character, the person of God to us. That did it to his people and we can learn from that and know who God is really is but not just know the god not just know the names of god but know the god of the names it's not enough to know people's names or know someone's name and be talking someone's name you want to know the person behind the name the god behind the name and that's our purpose in this teaching series and that's why jesus came is so you can know the god of the name hallelujah and not just the names of god What's the point of being able to reel out the names of God? Elohim, El Shaddai, El Elyon, Adonai, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah this, Jehovah that. You know the name, but do you know the God of the names? Do you know who or uh, whose name that you're calling? When you know him, it shows up in your life as strength. It shows up in your life as faith. It shows up in your life as courage. It shows up in your life as, you know, knowing that you will overcome in any situation you are in. You just know <laughs> that you are going to win. You just know that you are going to overcome. Because you know the God in whom you have believed. So, started talking about Jehovah. I'm just going to uh, look at that again and wrap that up today. The manifestation of God in his name Jehovah. And we said that Jehovah is the redemptive name of God, is a manifestation of God 
uh, to us. Um, uh, Jehovah or Yahweh, uh, same thing. The self-existent, eternal, ever-revealing God who revealed himself to Moses and said, I did not reveal myself as Jehovah to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. I revealed myself as El Shaddai to them. But I'm revealing myself as Jehovah because the personal individual relationship that the patriarchs had the manifestation they needed was El Shaddai, the God who was more than enough for them. But when God was going to introduce himself to the nation of Israel, a nation of almost 2 million people, when he was going to deliver them from Egypt, he said, this is the name. He said to Moses, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go and bring them out of captivity. Moses said, uh, who am I going to say has sent me. Who am I going to say? What name am I going to tell these people of this God who is sending me? And God said to him, Tell them, I am that I am. Tell them, I am has sent you. Amen. Tell them, I am has sent you. And that's the name he gave. I am. Jehovah. Yahweh. Glory to God. I am has sent you. And so in introducing himself to the nation, to, to a company of people, he introduced himself as I am. And what is that? I am whoever you want me to be. I am to you whatever you need me to be. When he came to redeem and rescue his people from bondage, from slavery, from sin, from all that afflicted them, he revealed himself as the great I am that I am. Not a distant God, but he wanted to foster a close, loving relationship with his people. He gave them his true personal name, I am. And he invited them, come and know me personally. Not just one or two, but all of you. Come and know me personally. I am the great I am. You're going to be exposed. You're going to encounter many things out there. The nations around you are going to worship different things or different gods. But I want you to know, I am the one true living God. I want you to know me, Jehovah, the great I am. And he reveals himself to us. Let me not re-preach that. You can go watch that on YouTube. We have our messages uploaded there. He revealed himself in redemption through the history of the Israelites. He redeemed them from everything that they faced in their journey of life. He was their great provider. So he reveals himself as Jehovah Jireh. I will provide for you. He was their great healer. Saying, I will take sickness from the midst of you. I am the Lord that heals you. Jehovah Rapha. He redeems them from, from, from defeat and failure. Because there are many battles that we face in life. But we have to come to the knowledge that Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who is our banner of victory, he will always give us the victory. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's Jehovah Nisi and he's there for you. And in the process of life, there's going to be many things that want to worry us and make us anxious and make us worried and stressed out. But he says, listen, I am your peace. I am your peace, Jehovah Shalom. Your peace is in me. Your peace is not when everything works out and everything lines up. Your peace is in me. I am your peace. Indeed, his name is called the Prince of Peace. That means he is the bringer of peace. Jehovah Shalom. Anxiety, fear, worry, stress, 
should not be part of your story and testimony. Anything that wants to cause you to be anxious. Can I say something to you? Just rest in the Lord. Give it to the Lord and he will surely handle it for you. Sometimes we miss out. Listen, sometimes we miss out on God doing things for us because we're always trying to do things for ourselves. We have to worry and fix this and fix that and fix it. If I don't fix it, if I don't do this, if I don't do that, it's not going to happen. Yeah, there are things we need to do. Yeah, there are things that we need to take responsibility for. But when you begin to worry and get anxious, you are leaving your own jurisdiction and trying to play God. Worry and anxiety is a sign that you are departing from the place of peace in God and going to a place of anxiety in yourself or in your circumstances. No, you have to resist that. That's why it says, do not be afraid. Do not be anxious for anything. Let me know what you need. Let me know what you're going through. I will take care of it. <laughs> so I've learned in my life. Because I face challenges too. But when challenge, challenges come to all of us. But when I begin to lose my peace and get anxious and stressed out, it's an indication to me that I am departing from trusting in God. I'm trying to figure this out by myself. I'm trying to make this work the way I want. I'm trying to make things happen by myself and how I want it. Basically, I'm trying to play God. You know why we get stressed out, anxious, and worried when we do all those things? Because we're trying to play God. We're trying to be who we are not. We were not created to be. We're not created to be God. God is God. He's the one who knows how everything should work. He's the one who knows when everything should happen. He's the one who knows how everything should happen. Not me. So when I try to control that and orchestrate that and it's not working and I begin to get stressed out, it's a sign that I'm trying to play God. And when you notice that, you know what you need to do? You need to just get yourself off the throne <laughs> and just get yourself and go to the feet of the one who is really the king in control. And just go bow down at his feet and share your concerns with him and hand it over to him. That's why it says, cast your cares on him. <laughs> Glory to God. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Cast your cares on him and return to that place of peace and rest in him who is Jehovah Shalom. Hallelujah. And another thing is confusion. There's confusion in the world. I don't know what to do. I don't know what decision to make. I don't know which way to go. Well, guess what? You have a shepherd. His name is Jehovah Rohi. The Lord is your shepherd. The responsibility and job of a shepherd, amongst other things, is to guide the sheep. Some sheep are just roaming around. Today they're in somebody's yard. Tomorrow they're in another person's yard. Day after tomorrow they're, they're crossing the road. The car is about to hit them. They're just straying and wandering. And you wonder, doesn't this sheep have a shepherd? <laughs> the job of the shepherd is to care for, to feed, but importantly to guide and lead the sheep. I don't know if you've ever really seen sheep. Sheep, sheep get easily confused. If you put a, uh, one sheep, can you imagine putting one sheep on the road? It's just going like this. Running forward, running backward, going there, going there, trying to stay alive, trying to survive. That's a picture of how some people's lives are. <laughs> going here, going there, looking here trying to dodge this car, run this way, trying to fix, uh, just trying to survive. But they're confused. Don't know which way to go, don't know what to do. Because they don't realize you have a shepherd and he's a good shepherd. He's a good shepherd. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will direct you. But you have to listen for his direction. His direction may not line up with what you think you should do. His direction may not always look like he's even directing you. 
Sometimes when he's guiding you, the path is not always green. When Sometimes when the shepherd is directing you on the journey he has for you, it's not always green grass. Psalm 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. But for some people, when the shepherd is trying to lead them, it doesn't look like, man, that, that path, that road looks rough, looks rocky. Man, what am I doing here? This is, has the shepherd, no, the shepherd is leading you. It may be a rough patch. It may be, a, it may be seem like the valley of the shadow of death, but just keep your eyes on the shepherd. He's going to lead you out. He's going to lead you to where he has ordained for you. Don't get confused. Don't start looking back. Don't start changing your mind and trying to figure out, man, it seems like this shepherd thing ain't working. Let me try and figure my way out. No, don't figure your way out. He is your way out. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Glory to God. Hold on to him. Keep your eyes on him. Confusion goes when you put your eyes back on the Lord. But when you put your eyes on circumstances, on other people, on you know your own agenda and time frame, I expected that by now this should have happened. I expected that by now this should have changed. Are you God? No, all you need to know is I know God, you have good plans for me. And I know that you are still leading me and you're still guiding me and you're leading me out into a wealthy place. I may go through a rough patch. I may go through a rough season. I may go through a rough few years, but I'm coming out because my shepherd who is leading me will not leave me here. He has a good plan for me, a plan of success and not failure, a plan of victory and not defeat. Glory to God. Amen. So let confusion, let it go as you listen to the shepherd. Let condemnation, let it flee. And realize that you are righteous in him. He is your righteousness and live righteously loneliness and abandonment should not be part of your story because the lord is always there the lord is always there i feel lonely i feel all alone you've lost sight of jehovah wherever you are he is there you only have to learn to practice his presence to realize he's with you and to learn how to connect with him the great i am now i have this is you know something that the lord said to me uh, while i was praying uh, a number of days ago he says when you know him as i am then you know who you are when you are not sure of your own i am it's an indication you need to draw near to the great I am. What do I mean by that? We all have an I am. I am blessed. I am confused. I am poor. I am sick. I am tired. I am so stressed out. Those are all I ams that you're declaring. But those are the wrong I am's. Those I am's are an evidence that you've lost sight of the great I am. So when you don't have the right I am's, it's time to draw near to the great I am. Hallelujah. Instead of that, you can say, I am blessed. I am prosperous. I am healed. I am victorious. I am more than a conqueror. I am righteous. Those are the right I am's. Those I am's are rooted in your knowledge of the great I am. You know, I know many times we, we quote, we say these things because they say we should say them. I know in our church, we have a declaration we make. You know, I am blessed. I am prosperous. I am redeemed. I am a child of the Most High God. I am this and I am that. It's okay to say those things and to recite them. But it should, because it helps us to actually begin to believe that. But I, I want to challenge us with a thought today. The revelation of who you say for yourself, I am, is not rooted in a, in a, in a, in a pamphlet that you read. 
It's not rooted in something you read on Sunday morning on the screen. It may begin there, but it has to be rooted in your knowledge of the great I am. Otherwise, you can say those things in your head, yet not truly believe it in your heart. Because believing it in your heart requires that you know the great I am. How can you say I am something when you don't know the great I am? Obviously, you will be saying the wrong I am. Is somebody hearing me today? This is so important. It is so important. Your I am is a declaration of who you are and whose you are that you believe is a declaration that is conveying your knowledge of who you are and whose you are is declaring for everyone to see that i know the great i am listen you have to do these things the, the because once again it, it's rooted in the, the 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 manifestation of i am in our you see i can come here and talk about i am this jehovah jara jehovah this but I, I don't just want to talk about it i want you to see that manifestation in your life when the need arises that's what happened with the people when the need arose god showed up it's good to talk about it on friday morning it's good to declare it on Sunday morning in church. But the end of that is that when in that time of need, when that sickness tries to harass your body, you see the manifestation of I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals you. You see the manifestation, I am Jehovah Rohi, that gives you guidance and leads you out of a place of confusion. That's the goal. That's the end. Amen? And once again, uh, these manifestations need you to mix faith with the knowledge that we're giving you. What do I mean by that? Without mixing faith, without believing this and doing something, taking some action, it is difficult for you to see, for you to see the manifestation of I am without mixing faith and doing something. Amen? Mix faith with what you have heard and what you have believed. What you're hearing even right now. Mix faith with it. Very quickly, let me just run through a few things and to help us understand this. And then, you know, we'll wrap it up for today. When you see Jehovah Jireh, for example, we know Jehovah Jireh, my provider, your grace is sufficient for me. The Lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Yes, those are truths. Those are facts. But you connect with the manifestation of Jehovah Jireh through faith. And faith in him, listen carefully, provokes you to do something. Every manifestation of Jehovah to his people in the Old Testament was on the heels of them, him saying something to them and them doing what he said. Amen? You have to do something. You cannot say Jehovah Jireh is my provider and then sit down and do nothing. Hello? Hello? Oh, is somebody hearing me? Too? This is so important. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, and then you don't do anything. You will not see the manifestation of Jehovah Jireh. You have to do something. The Bible says, if a man will not work, let him not eat. The same God said that. That in all labor, there is profit. That God will bless the works of your hands. So if you believe in Jehovah Jireh, then you believe in what Jehovah Jireh has said. It's not just, you know, uh, you know, just wishing on the clouds, wishing on the stars, and hoping something will happen. 
No, you have to mix faith with it. A person can sit down in the house, sing Jehovah Jireh, my provider, your grace of from morning to night, but sits down, doesn't work. You will starve. You will struggle. It will seem like Jehovah Jireh is not real. He is very real. He is very, <laughs> he is very real. But you got to do something. You got to mix faith with it. Faith without works is dead. You got to do something as a, as a manifestation of your faith. You got to go get a job. Now, God will bless you on that job. Jehovah Jireh will bless you beyond that job. He will give you promotion on that job. But guess what? You can't just sit back and do nothing and say, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Amen. The laborer is worthy of his wages, the Bible says. Some of us labor in the word and in prayer. It's a different type of labor. But you have to labor somehow. Amen. Are you following me? You have to work and then see the manifestation of Jehovah Jireh. So as part of our faith in God to provide for us, listen, we trust him to provide work. <laughs> and then we work diligently. Are you following me? So Jehovah Jireh, my provider, part of his providing is providing you a job when you ask him for it. And then you go there and represent him and work hard and work diligently and work faithfully. And then you get compensated and you get promoted and you get elevated. You can't go there and be irresponsible, inconsistent, inconsiderate, and then pray, God, promote me, God, promote me. God, promote what? Promote uh, incompetence? <laughs> you don't promote incompetence. No. Even God will not promote incompetence. Yes, I said so. God will not promote uh, 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 you know, inconsistency. God will promote faithfulness. You're there on time. You work hard. You do your best. You don't do the barest minimum. Walk when the boss is looking. When they're not looking, you're fooling around, talking on the phone, playing games, and doing all kind of nonsense. And then you go to church and say, God, my promotion, my promotion, my promotion. Why is it not coming? What is God going to promote? <laughs> you think God is going to promote that and bring embarrassment to you and to his name? God doesn't want to set you up for failure. But when God sees faithfulness and consistency and, 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 and excellence, and he will lift you up, man. Humility, a heart of service, selflessness. That's the kind of thing that God wants to promote. Are you listening? Jehovah Jireh will keep showing up in such a situation. So we work hard. The labor is worthy of his wages. But the thing is this. We don't put our trust and our expectation in the works of our hands. And that's the caveat. We trust in the living God who is our source. Your job is not your source. You need to work because God commanded us to work. Work is also an opportunity for us to use our talents and our gifts that God has given us. God gave to every man talents and gifts. There is some talent that you have. You need to trade with it. That trading with your talent is what is called work. I'm trading with my talent right now. This is work for me. This is not play. This is work, my job. I seek God. I study. I prepare. I labor in the word. And I work to be a blessing to people. Whatever your gifting, your talent. And you know, God gives, sometimes God gives us many gifts. So you have to discover what those different gifts are. Trade with them. Work with them. Develop them, then work with it. And then you will see Jehovah begin to show up as Jireh in your life. Jireh is not just, oh, when my, I can't pay my bills. Oh God, Jehovah Jireh, save me, rescue me. He will. But 
you still need to understand that it is important to do something, to mix faith with your expectation. Don't begrudge people out there that don't believe in God, but they work hard, they're very diligent, they're very faithful, and they're successful. <laughs> they're making money. They're living good. They're working hard. And then think you can just sit back and not work hard. And because you know Jehovah, Jehovah will just give you everything. Are you listening to me? Oh, please hear me today. This is good teaching. This is, this is, this is frank teaching. So perchance you find yourself in that place, you got to read. Hear me. Get, get, get back up. Don't be mediocre. Be excellent in what you do. Don't be unfaithful. Be faithful. Be diligent. Be the best. You aim to be your best at whatever you do. Because you're doing it as unto the Lord. Working hard. Working diligently. Not, you know, not sleeping when you should be working. Not, you know, playing when you should be working. You know, sometimes, you know, people, <laughs> sometimes it's, in, it's even more challenging when you don't have a nine to five per se. You know, sometimes people ask me, what do you do? Because I work, I, I, I work from home. I'm in my office sometimes from morning till night, till evening. I thought, oh, preachers don't do anything. That's what you think. Eh? <laughs> I'm not going to not work and expect God to bless me and provide for me. No. If a man will not work, let him not eat. The Bible says. Are you listening to me? Amen. And so, mixing faith with the knowledge of God that we have causes us to see that manifestation in bigger and better ways. Jehovah Nisi, for example, the Lord, our victory. But guess what? If you must see the manifestation of victory and Jehovah Nisi, sometimes you have to fight. <laughs> you have to fight. You have to show up. You have to fight the good fight of faith. Fight the what? The good fight of faith. You do not defeat your enemies. You do not win unless you confront them. And there's examples in scripture over and over again of that. Joshua and the Israelites, they had to fight the Amalekites. Yes, Moses was on the mountain holding up his staff. And whenever he held up his staff, they were winning. Whenever his arm began to get weak, they were losing. So Aaron and Hur came to uphold him and he held that staff up. And that represented Jehovah Nisi, a banner of victory. But guess what? They were fighting and they were winning. David had to face Goliath. He didn't just stay in his room and say, Oh, pray God, kill this Goliath. God, kill this Goliath. No, he went and faced Goliath. And Jehovah Nisi gave him the victory. Are you listening today? You don't hide from your giants. You don't hide from the, from the challenge. You don't hide from the fight. No, you get up and face the fight every single day. Knowing that you have the victory because Jehovah Nisi is with you. Are you listening to me? You don't give up and quit fighting. Even people that are sick, if you're struggling with some sickness in your body, you got to fight it. You don't just give, well, I guess this is my Lord. Oh, I just give up and, you know, belly up. No, you fight. You fight the good fight of faith. You resist. As you do so, Jehovah Nisi gives you the victory. Even sometimes, the bat, you may not even need to fight per se. But even in situations when you don't need to fight, you still have to show up and confront the enemy. For example, there's something going on in your office and people are coming against you at work and they're stressing you and, you know, and, and persecuting you. And then you give up and you resign. Or you don't show up at work. Or you quit. Are you serious? Oh, the pressure is too much. Get to know Jehovah Nisi. You have to show up. 
Because how is God going to give you the victory in front of your enemies if you run away from them? <laughs> how is God going to raise you above your enemies if you run away? Is somebody hearing me? Oh, it's too stressful. It's too challenging. Then you quit and you go. How is God going to show up as Nisi unless you show up in faith and face the situation, face the challenge? I'm not saying go there and become ornery and become contentious and be abusing people and fighting people and backbiting and doing all that. No. Keep showing up and keep being your best. Keep being loving. Keep being gentle. Keep being faithful. Keep being kind. But show up. That is when Jehovah Nisi goes to work on your behalf. Are you listening? Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah, they face a situation like that. And God said to them, you will not even need to fight in this battle. But go out against them. I'll read to you from 2 Chronicles 20, 15 to 17. He says, he said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid, don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. You see that? The battle is the Lord's. That doesn't mean stay in your bedroom. <laughs> the battle is the Lord's. That doesn't mean stay back at home and hide away. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel. Verse 17, 2 Chronicles 20. But you will not even need to fight. Take your position, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. I don't want you to miss that. You will not need to fight, but take your position. <laughs> Woo! Take your position. And stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you. Don't be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow. The Lord is with you. Can I say something to you? Go out again today. Go out again tomorrow. Go out again the day after that. Don't quit. Don't give up. Because the pressure is much. Guess what? Jehovah Nisi is for you. Your, the, the victory is yours. Just keep the banner of love raised up. Keep the banner of praise raised up. Praising God, loving, being your best. Victory is assured. You will see him manifest. Sometimes we don't see that victory because we quit too early. Sometimes we don't see that victory because we give up. No, fight the good fight of faith, man. Fight. I said fight. In your finances, fight. In whatever situation it is, fight that fight. In your health right now, don't give up. Victory is assured because Jehovah Nisi is with you. But you got to take your position. you got to confront. Run towards that giant. And that giant is bound to come down. Are you listening? And on and on it goes. If you're believing in Jehovah Rohi, your shepherd, to show up, you have to listen to him. You have to listen and follow his direction. That's when you see the manifestation of Jehovah Rohi, your shepherd. A sheep that is stubborn, that doesn't want to listen to the shepherd, that doesn't even want to follow the guidance of the shepherd, will not see the manifestation, the fullness of the manifestation of that shepherd in their life, of the guidance. They may not get to the destination that the shepherd has in store for them where there's more green grass. Because they're passing through a, a rough patch and they think, man, this is tough, man. And why is this? Man, man, let me turn back or let me try and figure out my own way. No, keep following the shepherd. There's a place he's taking you. Hallelujah. You have to what? You have to listen to his direction. If you refuse to listen and follow, you will not see the benefit of Jehovah Rohi. I encourage you, listen to the Lord. Listen for his voice. He's the shepherd of your soul. Don't think you know everything. Don't think you know how things are supposed to work. Especially when there's stress around. It's time to take, take a step back and go listen to the shepherd of your soul. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will correct you. He will redirect you. His rod and his staff, which is his word, will say, no, not that way. Come back this way. You may think that way is right. You may think what you're doing is right, but no, no, come back this way. The shepherd. Glory to God. You want to see shalom, Jehovah, the Lord of peace? And guess what? You have to sow peace. 
How do you fully expect to see Jehovah Shalom in your life when you're always striving and struggling? When you're always contending, arguing? How do you see Jehovah Shalom in that situation? You can't. You have to believe in the peace of God and then you sow peace. You sow peace. You're a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. You have to be a peacemaker. You have to seek peace and pursue it. The Bible says, He that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Hallelujah. You want to see Jehovah uh, Shalom, the Prince of Peace, show up mightily in your life with peace? Pursue peace. Don't pursue contention. Don't pursue argument. Pursue peace. Choose peace. Hallelujah. Keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Isaiah 26 says that. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. But if your mind is on this, that, this person, this happened, that happened, there will be no peace. Stressed out, worked up, and begins to show up in your life as stress, you see, stress in your soul. Can I say something? Stress in your soul will ultimately show up in your physical body. It will. We were not designed. God, the one who designed us, did not design us to be. That's why he keeps saying, don't be anxious for nothing. Cast your cares on the Lord. Because we were not designed. Our physical body was not designed to handle stress. So if you stress and stress and stress, your body itself, in trying to adapt to that stress, will begin to manifest all kinds of things. High blood pressure. Systems begin to fail. Body begins to break down. Because of stress. You can think you're getting away with it. Is somebody hearing me? You may think you're getting away with it, but you're not. Take it from me, I'm a doctor. 90% of diseases that doctors deal with, 90% or more, are associated with stress one way or the other. Yeah, genetic this and genetic that. But stress is a great predisposition, predisposing factor. Because your body wasn't designed. Your body was designed for peace. The one who is the prince of peace is the one who designed your body. He was designed for peace. Not for stress and struggle. Your blood pressure going up, headache. Muscles are tight. So you're having pain here, pain there. Ah, hello, somebody. That's a clue. I need some peace in my life. Prince of peace, come and bring wholeness back. Is so, are you, are you, listen, let's not just be Jehovah this and Jehovah that. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is the reality of knowing God. So you can enjoy peace from Jehovah Shalom. Your peace is too valuable. Amen. It's too valuable. Don't trade it for, for, for anything else. Rather, choose to be wrong and stay in peace. Choose to be look, look like a fool or stay in peace. Are you listening to me? What's the point of looking like I know I'm, and then you are all stressed out, your body's breaking down. It's not worth it. Where there is strife, fusion, there's, there's confusion, the Bible says, and every evil, evil work. work. Evil works in your body, evil works in your circumstances where there's striving and all that stuff. Don't have anything to do with that. Keep your mind stayed on the Lord. And He will keep you in perfect peace. Hallelujah. So what is my job? Keep your mind stayed on the Lord. He will keep you in perfect peace. But if you keep your mind stayed on one million things, stressed about this, worried about that, this about this, 
God doesn't have a chance to give you peace. You are too preoccupied with what you're dealing with. Amen. I got to wrap it up. Don't miss out on the manifestation of Jehovah in your life. He is your righteousness. Don't continue in sin. Saying Jehovah, Jesus is my righteousness. Yet you continue in sin. You will not see the manifestation of righteousness in your life. The Bible also says the fruit of righteousness is peace. The effect of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever. In righteousness, you'll be established. You'll be far from oppression, for you will not fear. You know why it's good to walk in righteousness? It eliminates fear, oppression from your life. Amen. Amen? Yes, you know, my righteousness, but when I walk in righteousness, guess what happens? Fear, oppression, and all those things are far away from me. Amen. Are you listening? So let's, let's, understand how to uh, see the manifestation of the great I am in our lives so that we can declare who I am. My I am is based on the great I am. If whenever I see somebody who has lost their identity and lost their real I am, I see somebody who has lost sight of the great I am. It's time to go back. Down at your feet, O oh Lord, is the most high place. In your presence, Lord, I seek your face. I seek your face. It's time to go back there. And rediscover your identity. Rediscover his identity. And rediscover your identity. Don't go around just quoting, quoting, quoting. I am this, I am this, I am this, I am this. When you finish the quotation, you walk away and you are the exact opposite of everything you just said. You are stressed. You are worried. You are anxious. You are <laughs> and because you are just declaring it by rote. But when you know it in your heart, because you know the great I am, Amen. then those I am's become a reality. Amen. Nothing can shake you from the I am. Listen, when you know the great I am and you know your own I am, what people do will not change your I am. Sometimes people are too moved, controlled by what other people do. They don't have an identity. Or I should say they're not strong in their identity. But when you're strong in your identity, nothing will move you from your identity. You will recognize when something is trying to steal your peace and say, eh, 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 I'm not going there. <laughs> You recognize something starts to see you're just saying, eh, eh, I'm not going there. I'm not even going to answer that. I'm not even going to get involved with that. I'm not even going to respond to that. I'm not even going to say anything to that. Because you recognize you're strong in your identity, in the place of peace, in a place of righteousness, in a place of rest. Hallelujah. Amen. Jehovah is our God. He is the great I am. Amen. Discover who he is. Read the word. Meditate on the scriptures. Meditate on who he is. And that will establish you in who you are. So you can go around instead of saying, I am stressed, I am sick, I am worried, I am this. You can go around and say, I am blessed. Amen. I am strong. Amen. I'm well able. Amen. I'm prosperous. Amen. Not because I have money in the bank. Not because everything is okay. But because of the great eye. <laughs> Amen. I am healed. I'm healthy. Oh, I, I forgot to say this. You can't be going around saying Jehovah, Jehovah, uh, Jehovah Rapha, right? Mm -hmm. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, and you don't take care of your health, you will not see a manifestation of Jehovah Rapha. <laughs> you will not. You will be sick. Don't eat right. No exercise. Don't get rest. Always stressed out. Yeah, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha what? Jehovah Rapha, your faith in Jehovah Rapha requires that you do something with that faith. Let your soul prosper so you can be in health. Amen? Amen. Let your soul prosper. That's the root right there. Let your soul prosper. And then also manage how you eat. Manage what you eat. Be wise in your choices. Personally, people say I'm blessed. I don't diet. 
I can't handle diets. It's too confusing. It's too laborious for me. Yeah. It's too laborious. It's 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 too there's too much that goes into say I'm doing this diet, I'm doing that. No, no. You know what I do? I'm I'm temperate in my consumption. I can eat anything, but I choose not to. I can eat this and eat that and snack on this snack, but I choose not to. If I did, I will put on weight. I will. I've, I've done it before. I've been there before. But when I become temperate in my consumption, being mindful of my health, I'm growing a bit older. My metabolism is still very active in Jesus' name. I'm not going to say the opposite. <laughs> Amen? But I have to be mindful and watchful. I can't eat as much. My 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 teenager right now, Dimeji, he's eating like I, I, I was talking to him yesterday, he's eating like a termite. He's eating and eating and eating and eating. I was there before. But I can't do that now. <laughs> if I do that now, it would affect me adversely. That's wisdom. That's Jehovah Rapha. Amen. Anyway, let me wrap it up. Let me close it up. I know you understand what I'm saying today. Your I am is rooted in your knowledge of the great I am. Get to know him. He is Jehovah, your Redeemer. Manifest himself in these different ways. Came down to the earth to show up and show us who he really is. So we could know him. So we could trust him. So we could give our lives to him. And realize that because he lives, because he is the I am, mm. that's why I am. I live because he lives. Mm. I am because he is I am. Amen. I am because he is I am. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. thank you so much for your word to us today. Yes, Lord. Lord, we acknowledge you. We just praise you this morning. Yes, Lord. You are the great I am. Yes, Lord. You are the great I am. Jehovah is your name. Yes. Jehovah is your name. You are to us our great redeemer. Yes, Lord. And you manifest in our lives and you want to show up in our lives in these different manifestations, in different ways. Yes, Lord, help us to cooperate with you. Yes, Lord. Help us to believe in you. Yes, Lord. And in believing in you, to do what you say to us so that we can see the manifestation of what you want to do in our lives. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, I Lord. give you praise and glory this morning. Thank you for what we've heard today. Lord, help me to take root in our hearts yes, as we endeavor to act upon these truths so we can see the blessing that you have prepared for us. I pray for your people out there today, Lord. I bless them in the name of yes, Jesus. Lord. As many as need healing, be healed. Mm. Lord, those who, are need, who need provision right now, even for this season, yes, Lord. Lord, supernaturally provide for them. Amen. Lord, give them favor. Amen. Cause people to remember them. Amen. Lord God, give them increase, bonuses on their job. Yes, Lord. Let their efforts and their excellence be recognized Amen. and be rewarded. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. You. And Lord, for those who are confused, stressed out, Lord, as they cast their cares upon you, let your peace rule and reign in their lives. Yes, I speak peace over you in the name yes. of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. You. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We love you so much. Yes, Jesus, we love you. Yes. We appreciate you. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. God is good. I hope you were blessed by that. Perchance you are listening to me and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have not embraced the great I am. You can do so today. The Bible says, as many as believe him, to them he gives the power to become the sons of God. If you okay. confess Jesus with your mouth, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved, the Bible says. Amen. And so if you've never done that, you're watching this broadcast either live right now, whenever you're watching, and you want to give your heart to Jesus and make him the Lord of your life, it's very easy to do so. All you have to do is confess that with your mouth and call on the name of the Lord. And we can help guide you in making that call right now. Yes. So if you just repeat this after me with faith in your heart, say this after me. Say, 
Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I believe. I believe that Jesus died for me. That Jesus died for me. And on the third day. And on the third day. You raised him from the you dead. You raised him from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For dying for my sins. For dying for my sins. For dying in my place. For dying in my place. And thank you. And thank you for bringing me new life. For bringing me new life. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. I invite you to be my savior. I invite you to be my savior. And I surrender to your lordship. And I surrender to your lordship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For saving me. For saving me. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you just said that prayer, congratulations. Why yes. do I say congratulations? Because you just became a child of God. Amen. Just like that. Hallelujah. On the authority of the word of God. Like whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. saved. And, the, and the Bible also says there's rejoicing in heaven over one um, soul that is saved and 99 that comes to the Lord and 99 that are already saved. So there's a party going on in heaven on your account today. Amen. So welcome, welcome brother, welcome sister. Welcome it's to great to have you into the family of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Congratulations. Tell somebody you did this. Tell somebody you know someone, maybe someone who's invited you to church, maybe someone in your family. Tell them I give my life to Jesus so they can rejoice with you. Also, you can write to us, Ambassador International 15 at gmail.com with your prayer requests. Connect with us on Facebook, connect with us on Instagram, connect with us, you know, through our email. We're here for you, praying for you. We want to pray specifically for you if you need anything that you need us to pray about. Please take advantage of that in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, uh, read your Bible every day. Get a Bible, read it every day. There's a Bible app on your phone. Some people say they don't like, you know, Bible on phone and all that stuff. Well, everybody has it. Well, if you don't, then get a, a hard copy yeah. Bible. And if you, use if, it. You do, if you if you if you if you rather have a hard copy Bible, go to a, a Bible believing church near you. I know I'm, I I know you may have some friends that go to church. Go to a Bible believing church. They will give you a Bible there. But you also need to become part of that church. Or buy yourself a Bible. Yeah, you, <laughs> you need to become part of that church, right? And get planted in the house of God so you can keep growing in the knowledge of God. So you can be strong and be able to resist everything the enemy has coming against you. Praise God. All right. Thanks for joining us today. Before we finish, just want to introduce once again. I mention once again, my book, The House of Prayer Built, is still selling on Amazon. And it's selling like hot cake. Praise Amen. God. Order yours today so you can get it ahead of uh, on time for Christmas. It's time to order Christmas. Uh, don't allow yourself to get stressed in the season. Rather, enjoy Jesus. He is the reason for the season. It's not about the gift. It's not about the food. It's about Jesus. Spend time with family and have fun. Amen. Don't eat too much. <laughs> but most importantly, get with the shepherd of your soul. Bless you. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you again soon. An ambassador life. Have a terrific day. Bye for now. God bless. See you soon. I'm just preaching next week. Wednesday. Oh, by the way, my <laughs> wife is going to be preaching next week. Uh, Busola is going to be bringing the word next week on ambassador life. You don't want to miss that. She gets more views than I do. Praise God. I'm not jealous. I'm just saying that <laughs> so that you can make sure you come. It must be that she's got some things to say yeah, that right. people find uh, uh, helpful and valuable. Because I've tracked the history of our videos. Her videos get more views than mine do. Mine do. Praise God. That's good for me. Praise God. It's good advertisement for Jesus and for me as well. Praise God. <laughs> Maybe people will come back because they heard something that she said. All right. <laughs> You've got to go. Next week, Friday, join us once again on Basadi Live. Musala is bringing the word. God bless you. Have a terrific weekend. Go to church this weekend. Be blessed. We love you. Bye for now. Bye. God bless you. Thank you for joining us.